Today, we are gonna find the melee weapon that works for you. Melee weapons can come in two varieties, one-handed and two-handed. The one-handed weapons tend to have smaller, fast attacks, while the two-handed weapons are slow hitting, but do big damage. Keep in mind when you're picking a weapon that each weapon is going to have an attribute that's attached to it that's gonna buff it a little bit. It can have both primary and secondary attributes. Primary attributes are gonna buff the weapons more than secondary attributes do. If you wanna see which attributes help each weapon, check your attribute screen and look next to the name of the attribute. You'll see a list of icons next to the name that represent each weapon and if you scroll over the question mark it's going to show you whether it is a primary or a secondary attribute for that weapon anyways let's get into the melee weapons we're going to start off with the sword and shield this is the weapon that you're going to start the game with it scales off of both strength and dexterity but strength is its primary attribute and it's going to offer you skills from both the sword master and the defender skill trees Pulling from the Swordmaster tree, you're gonna get a little bit more damage-centric abilities. The first one is Whirling Blade. This is gonna cause you to spin and do damage to everyone near you. The second ability that you're gonna be able to unlock through this tree is Reverse Stab. This is a stabbing attack that does big damage. The name makes it seem like you're gonna stab people behind you, but really you're gonna stab in the direction that you're aiming your crosshair. So be careful not to be confused by this. The final ability is Leaping Strike. This is gonna cause you to jump forward and stab the enemies in front of you after you land, and it's gonna do big damage. Moving on to the Defender category, this is gonna offer you more abilities that are centered around the shield. First one is Shield Rush. When you activate this, you're gonna charge forward, knocking enemies back and doing big damage. If you opt to grab the Shield Bash ability, this is gonna cause you to hit enemies with your shield, doing small damage and applying a short stun. The last defender ability is Defiant Stance. This is simply just gonna make you take less damage for eight seconds. If you wanna lean into tanking with the sword and shield, you can pick up a Carnelian Gym. This is going to go into your sword and it's gonna cause both your Defiant Stance and your Shield Bash to increase your taunt, which makes enemies focus on you. This is good to make sure that you keep taking the damage and not the more DPS oriented people that may be in your group. Anyways, moving on, we're gonna grab the spear. This is a two-handed weapon based off of dexterity and strength. Dexterity is its primary attribute. Looking into the skill trees, you're gonna see both zoner and impaler. Pulling from the zoner tree, you're gonna have javelin. This is gonna allow you to throw your spear doing big damage and staggering the enemy. Your spear is gonna appear in your hand after you throw it, so you don't have to worry about going and finding it after you throw it. The second ability is sweep. This is gonna do small damage to nearby enemies and knock them all to the ground. Usually you can use this time to get off a heavy attack. Looking at Cyclone, this is an ability that's gonna make you do a spinning attack that does damage, pushes the targets back, and also slows them. This is really good for helping prevent enemies from getting too close to you. Moving on to the Impaler tree, we are gonna have Skewer. This is gonna cause you to jump forward and do big damage. It's also gonna apply a bleed that does damage over time. Perforate is gonna cause you to stab three times quickly. Each of these are gonna do medium damage and it's gonna apply Rend, which makes the target absorb less damage. The final ability has one of my favorite animations in the game. This is Vault Kick. Activating this is gonna cause you to vault forward on your spear and kick the enemy for medium damage. It's also gonna stun them for a second and a half. The spear can help you do pretty good burst damage and also CC a bit, but it's a little bit difficult to get down your attack and defending times, so you wanna get used to that. Be aware that when the enemy swing at you, you're either going to want to block or dodge out of the way. If you're mid-attack, you're not going to be able to do this. Up next, we have the first of the big boys. This is the Great Axe. As you can imagine, this is a two-handed weapon, and it also is based off your strength attribute. Your two Great Axe categories are going to be Reaper and Mauler. Reaper is going to offer you the Reap ability, which is going to pull in enemies in front of you and do damage to them. You're also going to be able to take the Charge ability. This is going to cause you to charge forward, doing damage when you reach the target. This attack can't be interrupted, so it's good for making sure that enemies don't get off CC attacks on you. The final attack is Execute, which is really hard hitting. It's gonna do 200% damage, and if your opponent is below half health, it's gonna do 300% damage. Moving over to the Mauler skill tree, we're gonna have Mailstorm. Mailstorm is a spinning attack that's gonna pull in all enemies that are close to you. You're also gonna get Whirlwind, which is another spinning attack. For this one, your spins are gonna continue for each successful hit that you land, causing you to spin around for a maximum of four times. And finally, we have Gravity Well. Doing this is gonna throw out an ax and create an area that pulls in enemies. After three seconds, this is gonna explode and do damage to all enemies that are inside the radius. The Great Axe has a lot of slow swinging big damage, and if you're looking for a weapon that's gonna keep enemies close to you, this might be the one. Moving on to something a little bit faster, we have the Rapier. This weapon is based off dexterity and intelligence, with dexterity being its primary attribute. Your skill trees are gonna be Blood and Grace. Pulling from the Blood category, you can actually pick from Tondo or Flurry off the bat. 
If you pick Flurry, that's going to allow you to unleash five quick attacks. Each of the five attacks is going to hit harder than the last. If you want to cancel this before you go through all five, you can do this just by dodging. If you decide to go with Tondo, it's going to cause you to swing your blade with an extended reach that does small damage. It's also going to apply a bleed that does 85% weapon damage over time. These bleeds can stack up to three times, and each time you apply a new bleed, the previous bleed timer resets. This is going to allow you to do a lot of damage over time, and it pairs really well with the next ability, which is Flourish and Finish. The first stage of this attack is going to knock back enemies, and if you left click, it's going to activate the second stage, which is going to lunge forward and will cause all your bleeds to do extra damage and hit all of their damage at once. If you have a lot of bleeds stacked up on your target, this is going to cause you to do a lot of damage. Moving over to the Grace category, we have Evade. This is going to cause you to dodge in the direction that you're moving and also allow you to do a really quick light attack. Fletch is going to cause you to dash forward, hitting all the enemies in front of you and doing big damage. And the final rapier ability is Repost. This is going to cause you to block for one second. If you're hit during this block animation, you're going to counter the attacker and stun them for a second and a half. The rapier is going to allow you to use your movement against your enemy and also use their own attacks against them. Overall, I think this is a pretty fun weapon. Moving on to the next beefy weapon, we have the Warhammer. This is a two-handed weapon and it's based off of the strength attribute. Juggernaut and Crowd Crushers are your skill trees for this weapon. Going into Juggernaut, we're going to have the Armor Breaker ability. This is going to penetrate your enemy's armor and do big damage to them. We also have Mighty Gavel, which is an overhead attack that's going to do huge damage. And then we have Wrecking Ball. This is going to do big damage and also smash the enemy to the ground. From the Crowd Crusher skill tree, we have Clear Out. This is going to do damage to the enemies in front of you and also knock them back. Shockwave is a hard-hitting AoE attack that stuns all the enemies that you hit with it. And finally, we have Path of Destiny. This is going to make you strike the ground and cause a series of AoE attacks in front of you, doing damage to anyone inside of them. The Warhammer can do massive damage to a single target or do damage to everyone surrounding you. If this sounds like fun, you might want to pick it up. Moving on to something a little bit smaller, we have the Hatchet. This is a one-handed weapon that is based off of Strength and Dexterity. Strength is going to be the primary attribute for the Hatchet. You're going to be able to pull from both the Berserker and the Throwing skill tree. Starting with the Berserker tree, we're going to have Berserk. This is just going to cause you to increase your damage for 12 seconds. You can mix this with Feral Rush, which is going to cause you to dash forward and hit twice. When you do this, the second attack is going to hit harder than the first one. You can also pick up Raging Torrent. When activated, you're going to do four really fast attacks that do 90% weapon damage each. What's cool about the hatchet is you can add a little bit of range to it by going into the throwing skill tree. The first ability you're going to get out of this is Rending Throw. This is going to make you throw your axe doing damage to the enemy and also causing them to take more damage for 10 seconds after it hits them. You can also pick up Social Distancing. You use this when enemies get a little bit too close to you. It's going to cause you to throw your axe and also jump back at the same time. This is going to do good damage and also slow the enemy. Adding another throwing ability, we have Infected Throw. This is going to throw out an axe doing big damage. It also lowers the enemy's attack damage and causes them to receive less healing. We talked a little bit about the hatchet in my ranged weapon guide. If you're looking for a good secondary weapon, this would be a good video to check out. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. My name is Marcus, aka Apostle. Thanks for watching.